questions? Wait, what, what are the emotions um, after that one, given what it took to get it back to the overtime after being done in the fourth? Same as a regular loss, man. Uh, Matt. Uh, Cause it's all the everything we could have controlled. So uh, yeah, we we'll, we'll watch film tomorrow uh, or the next day and figure it out. Aside, what, what do you make of the of the way you guys played defensively and allowing them to shoot? It was over fifty percent from three for a majority of the game. <laughs> Shit. Mm. Obviously, we weren't ready. Uh, and we all know that. So uh, we just got to look in the mirror, uh, especially on back-to-backs, um, and lock in even more um, because we know this team play hard, super hard, um, especially on the defensive end, um, trying to speed us up. Um, and they just cut. They just play hard, man. It's a hard playing team. Um, so yeah, hats off to them. Anything else from Lee? Thanks, everyone. We got tomorrow coming. Tonight was obviously a big thing about Vince, and, and a theme that was repeated is kind of like the impact he's had on Canadians and, and Canadian players who took up the game. I'm wondering, have you ever given thought to kind of like the impact you'll have down the line, the, the younger generations who kind of picked it up when you were a rapper? Nah, you know, it's hard to tell when you're in a moment. You know, um, you hear certain things here and there. You know, I remember when R.J. Barrett came in the league, that was one thing he mentioned was, you know, he watched me growing up. So you hear it here, here and there about, you know, our era when I was here in Toronto. Um, but to fully understand the impact, I think, I think you, you know, you really won't see it when you walk away from the game. Tomorrow, obviously an emotional night, and you're so closely tied to mm-hmm. the reason why it was an emotional night. Mm-hmm. How, how tough is that to play through when you also have a game to go out there? Um... I mean, it's it's not necessarily tough. It's more so, um, you know, it's, it's it's one of those things that, for me, and it being in a unique situation of, of of having such a close bond to this organization, to the city, um, to play against Vince, understand the history of Vince here, um, have a relationship with Vince, to see things come full circle, to be here, um, to witness the incredible night he had. Um, it's 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 a surreal moment because you know every time I come back here I just remember being a 19 year old kid, you know figuring out life. Um, so just to see it come full circle this way, you know it's it's it's, it's special. I'm I'm more than happy that I just got the opportunity to be here to to witness it to feel feel the energy. What's it been like over the years to watch it come full circle? Because when mm-hmm. you first got here, like he was still getting booed whenever he'd come here, and then yeah. you were here in 2014 yeah. when Matt began to shift. And then obviously mm-hmm. tonight, what's that been like to kind of see that? I mean, that, that's a cool thing because for us as players, I remember we were just big on whenever Vince came back and the respect that, you know, he deserved, you know, um, in the city, in this country for what he did um, for the game of basketball. So for us, you know, as players, when I was here to cheer that on, to see the reception kind of shift and him get his appreciation, especially, you know, his last couple of years, um, that's what it was all about. You know, you just want to be able to see him get his flowers and for it to come full circle to tonight with his number being the first number going up as it should be. Um, it was incredible. What did he mean to you? I mean, he meant everything. You know, that was one of my favorite players growing up. Um, you know, I think I said this before. I remember in L.A. waking up at 9 o'clock in the morning on the weekends watching those early games um, on ABC. You know, the excitement that he brought to the game. Um, he was electric um, in, in, in so many ways. Um, so being a fan of his first and being able to gain a relationship um, with him throughout my playing career to see now, um, you know, he definitely meant a lot, especially with me getting drafted here. You know, that was something I try to just model and bring the excitement and appreciate, appreciation back for basketball, you know, what I came here because of Vince. Have you thought how 10 might look next to 15 <laughs> and 7? Nah, I, I, it's crazy because, you know, I try not to think about it. You know, um, you know, it's, it's just more so cool to see Vince go up than, you know, um, without a doubt, you know, Cal going to be up there. You know, um, I, 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 I rarely think about mine going up there unless it's mentioned to me, you know. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's beyond honor. You know, I'm always humbled just the thought of, of, of that even being an opportunity. Is there, I mean, obviously every time you go into a game you want to win, but mm-hmm. was there a little bit extra tonight knowing the moment? Nah, I just wanted to win. You know, it, it, was, it was already a tough, you know, um, 
you know, coming from Atlanta back to back, it was a tough game. Just trying to get our get our juices going. And you know, when we started in the second quarter, towards the end of the second quarter, you know, got a longer halftime, kind of cool down, got to get yourself back going. Um, you know, it, I wouldn't say it was more so extra juice because you know the other team going to bring the juice. So you just try to be as ready as possible. This team is obviously really young. Uh, being on that side of like being on a young rebuilding team, you've experienced it here. What are you noticing from, from what you've seen so far tonight? Competing. You know, when you got a team, you know, that's competing, they down, you know, um, a couple of their best players, you know, and they still went out there and compete. They played extremely hard, played, play, you know, together all night. You know, they didn't stop. You know, um, they kept pushing. You know, a lot of games that they had this season, it was close. You know, so they will coach and, you know, they're going out there competing and that's all you can ask for from a team, honestly. Well, what, what clicked for you guys after about that six-minute mark in, in the fourth quarter? I know you mentioned you guys were kind of shaking the cobwebs a little bit. Um, I mean, we just tried to string string together stops. You know, we wasn't getting the stops like we, you know, like we needed to, you know, and we understood once we got stops and stopped turning the ball over so much, we would give ourselves a better opportunity, and we had spurts of that. Um, but, you know, we let a lot of things get away, you know, when we was right there, especially towards the end of the game, um, that, that, you know, kind of missed out on the opportunity to win this game. Are you and De'Aaron both? Being kind of used to being like the guy in crunch time, like you won Clutch Player of the Year a couple of years ago. You were runner up last year, so how's that been between the two of you guys, kind of figuring out the flow and the balance in crunch time? Um, it's been great. You know, honestly, it's it's, it's you know a couple games in, we still got a lot to learn, still got a lot a lot of. Chemistry, we still can build, but as far as it is now, you know, it's, it's, it's been great. You know, we still got a lot to work on, um, get comfortable with, but I got the utmost confidence, you know, when it comes down to those, those us two, that we're going to be able to figure it out at a high level, especially come fourth quarter. Uh, DeMar, uh, yeah, if you're in a general question about basketball and international game, uh, it seems that the NBA Cup uh, is, a, is a good setting for, for the league to, to experiment in new things. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing how the international game has grown, uh, would you like to, to see at some point uh, EuroLeague teams participating in the, in the NBA Cup? Um. Any any level of competition around the world to compete versus the best players in the world, I think is 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 an amazing idea. You know, all for it. I think that's some that's cool. You know, we see it during FIBA. FIBA, we see it during the Olympics. You know, when U.S. play against the international players, um, and the international players have a lot of great players over there. So you know, the idea of that sounds cool. That's one. Three in tonight's broadcast. I'm mean, sorry, Demar in. Tonight's broadcast, Drake said, if you ever put up the, the, the Rosen banner up, I'll go up there and put it down myself. What's your reaction to that? Well, he got a, he gonna have a long way to climb to take it down, so <laughs> tell him good luck. Thanks, everyone. Uh, tough loss. Uh, you know, give Toronto credit. Uh, They've uh, they've lost a handful of games, but uh, they've played extremely hard uh, this year, and they played really hard tonight. I thought uh, their pressure, their aggressiveness uh, bothered us. We had uh, you know 18 turnovers uh, for 26 points, and that was huge. I thought um, you know they in the two hustle categories that are on the stat sheet in terms of second chance points and fast break points. I mean, they wasn't even close. They outscored us 43 to 43 to 29, you know, 27 fast break points, uh, 15, 16 second chance points. Uh, that's tough to overcome when you lose both those categories and you also turn the ball over the way we did. And then, you know, yeah, like I said, you give Toronto credit. I thought they forced us into taking some, some tough shots. It was a real stagnant game for us, a lot of one-on-one -on -one and uh, a lot of tough shots by, uh, by our guys. And, uh, you know, you give, like I said, Toronto credit. Um, Boucher had a game uh, off the bench and, and – uh, uh, Akbaji had a game too, so great game for them. Good win. Wait, what do you make of how the first like three and a half quarters went, and particularly the three point defense? <clears throat> given that I think during that stretch they were like over Yeah, you know, Chris, we didn't do a good job of catching the, catching the drive. You know, uh, a lot of their three their threes happened in transition. 
where we didn't match up. We just kind of nonchalantly ran back and and weren't talking and didn't match up with a sense of urgency. Or um, we let them dribble drive because our closeouts weren't great. Um, or we miscommunicated on a coverage. And so now they're getting into the paint and we pull over to help and then they sprayed the basketball they actually they played the way we want to play you know tonight and they were getting some great looks from the three-point line uh, you know I thought I thought we had some good looks from the three we just didn't go but uh we we took a lot of a lot of tough shots you know they they uh forced us into a lot of one-on-one and a lot of tough shots that uh, didn't go down but when you're um you know, giving up shots the way that that that, that we're giving up shots uh, in transition and on the glass. You know, 43 total points. Uh, it, it's it's tough to combat that when you also have you know 18 turnovers for 26 points. When De'Aaron goes 0 for 11 from three, I mean, I see it's second night of a back-to-back, and those nights are going to happen occasionally. But is, is there anything you try to do in, in moments like that or anything you can say to Fox after a game like that, or is it just kind of one of those, one of those nights? No, yeah, you know, it's one of those nights. Uh, he's got to keep shooting them if, if he's open. Uh, you know, the 0 for 11 happens. You know, you... you, you you know, he got to the free throw line 10 times. You hope that that can increase as well. But uh, I thought he took a couple of tough ones, but I thought we all took a couple of tough ones tonight, uh, not just from the three-point line, even some tough twos that played right into their hands. And so uh, <clears throat> I'm not worried about that as much as uh, our, our inability to defend and our inability to handle their pressure throughout most of the night. Domas, Fox, and um, DeRozan played 43 minutes. Impact your planning for Monday night in Miami at all? No, I mean, we, we got a day off tomorrow. You know, we'll travel to Miami uh, tomorrow. Um, then we'll have shoot around. We'll play. You know, I, 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 I keep saying this. It sounds like a broken record. I don't want to play those guys that many minutes. And and uh, I got to I gotta keep trying to figure that out. And with McDermott starting, was it just some, a function of keeping the other guys in their normal rotation? Yeah, we wanted to keep the guys in their rotations and, and then you know see if he can uh, knock down a shot or two to open the floor up for our guys. Um, and, and that's what it was because I needed to I need to find minutes someplace and I didn't want to change our starting lineup and then change our, our second unit. I thought our second unit was starting to catch a little bit of a rhythm. Um, and so if I could you know, just only change one unit slightly, then uh, that's what I would like to have done. Uh, not today, but we've seen Domas shooting more threes this season. Uh, is that a, like an order, like a plan, or it's like something that evolves, especially with DeMar now in the team and how he occupies uh, more of the no, we, we we Domas can shoot the ball. He's a really good shooter, and so uh, if he's open from a three point line, we want to let we want him to let it fly. So it was something we talked about in the off season, and he's done a nice job of working to get to a point to where he's a good shooter from there. And if he's open, we want him to let it go. Coach, uh, yeah, you face off today, uh, Dark Rajakovic. He's part of this uh, new, right, this new generation of coaches uh, coming up, like. Is the case also of uh, Jordi Fernandez and Joe Machula. Is there anything that differentiates these uh, these new generation generation of coaches uh, compared to to other other coaches with more more experience in the in the league? Uh, not not really. I mean, every, you know, everybody tries to space the floor and tries to dribble drive, touch the paint, and spray it, and try to get you guys to play as hard as you can defensively. If you go small, you switch. So they, they do a lot of what uh, uh, everybody else does. Uh, he's done a nice job of getting those guys to play hard early in the season, and uh, you know, you, you hope a young team like that can can grow and continue to play that way because they're build, building good habits. Coach, uh, I remember you saying last year that you felt like the offense that you guys had installed uh, a couple of years ago yeah. um, and the style that you guys played been sort of co-opted around the week. And I think you know, you seem like almost like continue this year even more in that direction with teams. Running stuff through like big man hubs, playing the crazy pace. Given how fast those kind of trends nowadays seem to get picked up on, 
and adopted by other teams around the league. How much are you thinking about that next kind of stylistic evolution, and what do you think that would be? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. We, you know, we have some some wrinkles that we put in this year, and we haven't gotten to them a lot. And, you know, we want to see how those shake out before we make uh, any major changes. But we like the way the we like the way we play. Um, our guys have done a great job with it over the course of you know two plus years now, and and uh, you know usually uh, when we don't play good offensively, it's because we, we're it's it's we're hurting ourselves by not making the simple play and then I thought like I said there were times tonight when when we didn't make the simple play so uh, but you got to give, give Toronto credit so we, we'll see we'll see in time if we change a thing or two how much like I guess of your time I'm obviously you have a lot of different responsibilities as a coach but you and your staff like is that something you guys are doing like ideating about sort of new wrinkles that you can install it Will maybe help you like stay ahead of that curve. Yeah, we, we we're always thinking about that, but you know, it's the one thing you have to always be careful of is you don't want to uh, change t too much because then guys will never get comfortable or good at what you're trying to install if you keep changing things. It's like same thing defensively. You know, uh, I've never been a, a, a guy defensively. To go from zone to triangle and two to man back to zone, but you know, you do it if you need it, and if it works, you stay with it. Uh, but if you keep changing, then guys will never be believe in anything that you do, and it's the same offensively. So we, we're, we're trying to uh, find a, a package uh, offensively that we're. we're where we feel like we can be comfortable with and, and get to uh, find wrinkles on our own out there with. And when we do, hopefully we'll take off. Last one, Brady. Yes, so tonight, Domas, he passed Larry Bird for 10 all-time triple doubles. Can you just speak to how important it is, how helpful it is to have somebody who consistently is double digits in multiple categories? Yeah, I mean, Domas has been our hub for, well, since I've been here for going on three years now. And, uh, you know, as skilled as he is in terms of shooting, passing, uh, and ball handling, you don't find that at a guy his size. And doesn't surprise me that uh, he has as many as he has um, because it, it fits him for who he is.